Hello, thank you for your interest in this session and presentation. My name is Mac Kleinhens. I'm with Ohio State University, and I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to summarize work my team has completed in recent years on one aspect of the much larger picture of vegetable grafting. Our work has been supported by the USDA Specialty Crop Research Initiative Program and members of industry, including tri -Histo. We have also benefited from collaboration with growers and from input provided by numerous people familiar with grafting and grafted plants. Grafted plants are known to have, a, to have high production potential, especially when specific soil-borne diseases are present. But however, uh, grafted plants are also known to cost more than standard non-grafted ones and to have underlying genetics that may require them to be managed differently in, for example, core cultural practices, such as in-row spacing, fertility, irrigation, and so forth. These adjustments may be needed in order to provide a maximum return on investment in grafted plants. And this uh, creates a learning curve calling for updated production recommendations. As you know, these recommendations require experimentation and can alter production costs and returns on investment relative to when standard non-grafted plants are used. We completed two experiments in recent years, but today I will summarize the one focused on plant density or plant population. The other experiment explored total seasonal nitrogen rate. Regardless, experiments completed each year since 2008 and the scion and rootstock varieties used in each experiment are listed here. The plant density or indoor spacing experiment has followed a timeline each year that is consistent with local practice, which also tends to include multiple harvests. Similarly, practice in the area has growers placing plants at various combinations of in and between row spacings based on various factors. Still, spacings, um, spacing rows six feet apart, uh, that is 1.83 meters apart, is common as is using an in-row spacing of four feet or 1.22 meters. We used in-row spacings of four and five feet or 1.22 and 1.52 meters respectively in this experiment. These spacings differ by approximately 20% and therefore represent a potentially meaningful change in the number of plants per acre, the cost of those plants and other production variables. Trihistral provided high quality plants for the experiment, and it has been ter absolutely terrific to work with them. Plots were arranged in a randomized complete block design with four replicates each year, 2019, uh, 20, and 21 shown here. Plots were structured as shown here. Plants were separated in the row by 1.22 or 1.52 meters. Rows were separated by 1.83 meters and plots totaling nine grafted or non-grafted plants were separated by two pollinizer plants in all three rows. Pollination has been enhanced with the assistance of hives provided by Dr. Reed Johnson of OSU Entomology. And we trained vines for the first 50 days or so to assist in identifying fruit at harvest. Field preparation was consistent with local commercial practice in terms of bedding and herbicide and fertilizer application, and transplanting was completed by hand. I would like to highlight four aspects of the fruit harvest and data collection process before turning our attention to the data. First, fruit are and were harvested two to three times per season. Second, all fruit meeting one or more of the four maturity criteria listed here are and were collected at each harvest. Fruit must display or have displayed one or more of these criteria in order to be eligible for harvest. Third, the harvest and data collection process includes the steps listed here, beginning with recording the total number and weight of the fruit meeting those maturity criteria and concluding with measuring and assessing multiple whole and internal fruit characteristics. These characteristics describe the size, shape, weight, appearance, and potential sweetness of the fruit. 
An error occurred in Harvest 2 in 2019. This error affects only fruit weight data on a plot basis, not fruit number. Also, fruit dimensions were recorded partly to assist us in estimating fruit density and in developing a protocol for estimating fruit weight before harvest, which we hope to report on later. Again, basics of the process look like this in pictures, beginning with fruit selection and collection, then photographs, and internal characteristics and BRICS measurements and ratings, including color ribbon ratings. These were all completed using accepted procedures and rating instruments. Before turning to the data from this on-station experiment, I would like to underscore the companion evaluations are being completed on the farms of grower cooperators using the same plant stock, and in some cases, additional grafted tomato plant stock uh, used in separate experiments and evaluations, but that is a subject for another time. So turning to the results of this in-row spacing study, so far, the seasons have been more distinct in terms of rainfall than growing degree day totals, with much more rainfall received in 2019 and in 2020. And it seems that 2021 is on pace to at least match rainfall received in 2019. Pictures in this slide and the next six slides, again, pictures in this slide and the next six ones, will provide additional visual reference on plot and plant development. All the pictures are of representative areas in the field at different points until and soon after row closure here in 2019, a group of pictures from 2020, and a third group of pictures from 2021. Again, for additional visual context, these are views of grafted and non-grafted fascination and jade star plots, in this case taken in 2020, and additional, uh, I'm sorry, individual fascination and jade star plants uh, photographed from above after transplanting in uh, 2020. Again, just a, a visual reference for the uh, condition of the plants and plots at different points in time also here in 2021. So analysis of variance gave initial strong evidence that the data set is, is uh, relatively clean and that the story it may offer is uh, also relatively straightforward. We see significant main effects for the variable uh, total fruit number and that the scion by grafting interaction is significant. However, we examine that scion by grafting term more closely and we discovered that the interaction is one of magnitude. To us, this indicates that the effect of grafting varied slightly with scion, but that the overall effect of grafting was otherwise very clear and consistent. Therefore, we have currently chosen to consider the principal findings uh, of this study as depicted as ones being depicted by the main effects of scion grafting and in row spacing. That approach also holds for total fruit weight. Overall, grafting nearly doubled the number of fruit meeting at least one of the maturity criteria. And, um, and at least, uh, oh, I'm sorry, meeting at least one of the maturity criteria and the number of fruit meeting at least one of those criteria, at least one criteria and weighing at least uh, 3.4 kg or eight pounds. The scenario pictured here uh, with non-grafted plants on the left and grafted, you know, fruit from non-grafted plants on the left and fruit from grafted plants on the right, this scenario uh, was relatively routine during our data collection process. The overall effect of grafting on total fruit num I'm sorry, total fruit weight was similar in nature to, but somewhat more dramatic than its effect on fruit number. The overall effect of in-row spacing on the total number of fruit, meaning at least one of those four maturity criteria and meeting at least one criterion and weighing at least 3.4 kg, the left-hand column and the right-hand column respectively. This effect was less pronounced than the effect of grafting, but still significant and of potential uh, significance that was still statistically significant and potentially meaningful in commercial production. Under the conditions of this experiment, increasing the in-row spacing by one foot 
and thereby decreasing the potential plant population by 20%, increased fruit yield by roughly the same amount. ANOVA also showed that fruit characteristics differed between varieties, which is no surprise, and were influenced by grafting more often than not, but they were not influenced by in-row spacing. The two fruits shown here typify fruit from grafted and non-grafted plants uh, from, for the variety fascination, and that the two fruit possess characteristics average for their type, non-grafted and grafted, internal quality from 2020. A brief glimpse uh, at what we're calling the fruit quality data suggests that fruit from grafted plants were larger, heavier, but equally dense as fruit from non-grafted plants. The data also show that fruit from grafted plants were similar in color, had higher stringiness scores, and thicker rinds that, um, than fruit from non-grafted plants although the bricks and internal cavity scores were similar. Growers working with the same plant stock have been optimistic about grafted plants. They've been seeking more information about them and they've become uh, increasingly prepared to source grafted plants directly and proactively. We take this as evidence that they're growing increasingly comfortable with the use of grafted plants, but also welcome more information about them. So in summary, we have demonstrated that the use of grafted watermelon plants can increase total seasonal fruit weight number and weight, that these increases may be accompanied by subtle but statistically significant changes in fruit characteristics, and that an in-row spacing of five versus four feet can have desirable consequences for growers. We hope this information is useful. We would enjoy uh, speaking with you about the project and addressing any questions you may have about it. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck. I hope to see you soon.